how do I make my content and my trainings more engaging because I have the I, I have the the value. And a lot of us, we already have the value, already have the knowledge. That's why we want to be coaches. That's why we want to be speakers and trainers and create courses and write books and do live events. We want to do all of those things because we have content and we have value to give the world, but those are just different ways we can package and offer what we do. But a lot of times we want to, we want to teach and help the people, but we're not creating it in a way that's engaging enough for them to keep coming back and learning because in order for us to grow, especially from um, from a fan base perspective or from a follower perspective, which ultimately is going to lead into us growing our programs, it's really it's going to come down to they're going to see your content first, right? Because that's how people are introduced into us first, right? They're usually not introduced into the product first, right? Unless you're unless you're like running an ad directly to a product but most of the time 99.999 percent of the time somebody's not going to get introduced to you directly through a product first right how are they going to get introduced to you first through your content right they've seen you speaking somewhere they've seen you coaching somewhere they've seen you on stage they saw you on somebody's podcast they came across the hashtag that you were using for your instagram or your facebook they saw you on tiktok somebody sent out an email about you but they saw, they came across you somehow and they locked on, you, you were doing your content. And this is how everybody gets discovered and everybody grows a fan base, right? Is they saw you somewhere speaking first. They like what you were talking about. Potentially they wanted to learn more. Or they said, yo, this is exactly what I need help with. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, where Tim been at? Where Ariel be? Oh, yo, where this person been at my whole life? Where this person been at? I've been needing this information. Mm -hmm. But if we're not creating the content that's compelling enough. Even if they came across us, they might not even know that how much we can help them or they might say, ah, oh, this is boring or they might tune out for a different reason, which is which is what we don't want. Say, so, all right, we all know we need to create content consistently. We know that video is, is what people engage with the most over written text, over audio. Video is what it is. And not only that, video is what these platforms are pushing. That's why when they come out with new features for videos, you want to hop on those features quickly because people we just know people engage with videos. So with that, we need to leverage it. So the so the very first thing that to really kind of pay attention to is how often are you creating videos? How often? Daily, weekly, multiple times a week. I recommend that you do at least drop a video at least once a day. Now, optimal is you want to do three to five posts a day, but if you can at least do a video a day, then that'd be great because people will come in contact with your brand morning, noon, and night. Some people only check their Instagram or Facebook or whatever platform in the morning. Some people check it multiple times throughout the day. Some people just check it once they get home and their whole day is done. So it really kind of just depends, right? So with that being said, it's really it really comes down to, okay, well, let me, regardless of when I post it, let me make sure that anytime I'm posting something that is, is it has great value, of course, but it's also engaging and entertaining. So here's some things that we can do. So when we're looking at creating videos or creating reels specifically, you want to have one, you want to make sure that you have a um, a running a running topic, like a running list of different topic areas that you can speak on. Right. Um, a lot of times. I get inspired by anything that's around me and I have a running list in my notes where I can just say, okay, if I wanted to right now, I can go to my phone and I can say, okay, cool. I want to talk about this topic. So now that I say, okay, I want to talk about this topic. I can just, if I wanted to, I could just go. But the purpose of the cornerstone content is it, it, it helps you. It help, it's giving you a system for what to write, but it also get, or what to the topics to speak on, but it also gives you a system for the the types of videos you can do. So let's go through some different let's go through some different ways we can create videos. The easiest way is the way that we all know. That's selfie, right? So you can do a selfie video. That's the one you just click play and you just speak directly. Um, there's two ways you can do it. You can do it. Um, you can do it through your phone and record it, and then you can upload it to the platform or upload it to Instagram or Facebook. Or you can do a native within the platform. So if you're doing Instagram Reels, I can actually record a video directly to the Instagram Reel. The difference is Instagram is smart enough. They want you to do everything. Optimum is doing 
everything inside native to the app. So yeah, if you do thing. something, if you do, if you do a video or real native through the app, instead of uploading it, they'll, the algorithm will actually give you more reach because of it. They basically rewarding you wow. for doing more things inside of the app. Does that make sense? So when you can, you can do that, but sometimes, you know, you might want to edit the video or you, you know what I mean? It might be certain things you want to do where you don't want to directly upload it. So there's no right or wrong, but they will, but you will get a little bit more of an edge if you do, if you record it right into the app. A lot of times I'll just record it into the app, especially if it's, you know, just something simple is you can flip the camera and you can show yourself writing something, right? Or show, or show, you can write, you can write on something, or you can write on a board, you can write on a flip chart. Sometimes they might just see your hand. So that's another thing that you can do, or you can flip the camera back and you'll see some of my videos where you'll see me writing on a whiteboard, right? So, or you see me writing on a flip chart. So it's just basically, it's a different way to engage with the content outside, instead of me just sitting in front of the camera and just speaking. Now you see me writing, it's more engaging, it's more entertaining. It's it's like, okay, you never know, right? Like what, what is he writing? What is, you know, it's just a lot more things for, for them to, it's a lot more, things just for them to be stimulated by with the tweet with the video playing in the background and the music because we already know that the video and the music works so whatever oh, psychological things that's happening people love it so why not if we already know that works why not just overlay my tweet we already know it's going to perform well and every time i do that it, it usually performs well right right because it has all the same elements. It just, has, just has the tweet there. And then if it's a good, if it's a good tweet or if it's a good status, people are gonna love it. Does that make sense? So that's um that's another video you can do. Um a easy, a easy video you can do. It won't necessarily be a reel, but um a easy video that you can do is literally just go live and repost it. Easy, right? So you go live, Instagram, whatever platform. Just teach and train and literally just repost it. A lot of them on Facebook is pretty easy because they just, you, you basically just have the ability to post on your feed. And then on uh, on Instagram, they ask you if you want to delete it or post it. And usually I'll post it. So I'll do that. Um, I'll go live. So I'll go live in our free group and I might just go live randomly on Instagram or Facebook. And depending on how I feel, I'll just post it. And that'll be an easy post that you can add. Um, also another type, and by the way, I can go live talking about saying no, right? The art and science of saying no, right? Oh, the science of saying no sounds kind of hard though. That sounds dope, right? The science of saying no, right? So that's another way you can do it. I can do, um, I can do a video. So every Friday I do what we call FAQ Fridays on Instagram. And for every Friday, I interview one of our clients and you know, basically, you know, just kind of see what strategies they're using, what's running, you know, what they're doing, et cetera, et cetera. So guess what? I can, I can talk about the science of saying no by, by interviewing our clients or coaching our clients. I can coach our client. I can coach somebody. I can coach somebody on the, the science of saying no, like, okay, this is how we do it. Boom, boom. And, and now literally you, you're coaching. It don't have to, if you don't have a client, yet or have any clients you can actually interview you can actually coach people that are in your community right or if you coaching you know teachers or students or kids or whatever the case is why don't you interview i mean why don't you why don't you coach them why don't you get them on video go live with them you know what i mean maybe you know maybe not kids directly depending on how old and young they are but you know you can do it specifically with um, you know, it could be with adults or teachers, or maybe it could be the students. I don't know, right? You decide, but the, but the idea about it is to make your content and your videos more engaging. It doesn't have to just be you talking to the camera. You can interview somebody, you can coach somebody, remix, replay content. I mean, there's literally a million ideas you can do. Um, same content, different context. And that's really what this is, is how to use the same context content, but there's a million different contexts and ways that you could display it. You can talk about it. You can show it. You can demonstrate it. Um, you could do. You could have. You could have a video where you're talking on a stage. You could have a video where you're in a studio being interviewed by somebody on a podcast. It's just a different visual. It's a different context, but you could be talking about the same thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So 
that's really one of the keys to that's really one of the challenges and keys that I want to give us this year is let's be prolific. And that's a good word to write down. Creating prolific content, creating prolific content, prolific content is something that's new, something that's different, something that's unique, something that um, something to just engage people in a different way, because now it's very common. It's very easy for somebody to just pick up a phone and just talk about, you know, just talk to their audience but how could you show it in a different way? Yeah. Could you be in a certain environment when you do it? Do you have a, can you have a certain background when you do it? Um, could you, you know, like, how do you just show it in a different way? And that, and if you do that consciously, you know, you'll be dope. It take a little bit of thought, but that's why we call it the cornerstone content formula, because without with it, what we do is you choose your top five videos of how you want to do it any, any way. You could, it could be anything. You could take products and talk. There's so many different ways you can create videos. But the biggest thing is when you create it, it's best if you give it a concept name that you're actually going to tell your audience. So what type of content can you create? And the easiest way to start and do this exercise is to say, what? let me choose my top five. And every day of the week, let me choose the concept or the style of video that I'm going to do for that day. A unique way, like you got to have, you can have similar elements, but it needs to be, you, you want to show something different. You know what I'm saying? Like show something different as, as part of it. So I'll give you a, I'll give you the flip example of that. Right. But his video, but his was like literally every single piece of content was the same. Right. So people are tuning out. Et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, you don't want to over, you don't want to overly do it where um the content looks exactly the same or everything everything is just your face. You don't have to have everything that's literally your face. Or